this is a 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro that was just released very recently here. So since this is supposed to be a pro laptop, I decided to grab it to bring it along with me throughout a day in the life. So I usually use the 16 inch MacBook uh, M1 Max from last year. And honestly, I know that's got more power than this one, but I wanted to you know, actually see how much this could handle. Like I'm not gonna be pushing it to its max or anything like that. I'm just going to be using it, you know, like I would um, the other ones. It also reminds me of the 15 inch MacBook Pro models that, you know, use the Intel chips right before they released the new um, MacBooks last year. So it has very similar design, you know, the touch bar and the touch ID. There's also thicker bezels around the screen and you know, that's okay, but um, I'm already used to, you know, having um, more screen real estate. And this is since they added more screen real estate to the pro models from last year by introducing the new notch. So that's not, you know, the case with this new one. There's no notch. Another thing that I noticed is that this model has a 720p HD webcam. The laptop also uses USB-C for charging as opposed to, you know, the Max A3 that was introduced back into the 16 and 14 inch models last year. There's also only two USB-C ports or Thunderbolt and USB 4 ports. And there's also um, a single headphone jack. So three ports in total, not, not a lot, but if you're going for this model, I wouldn't expect you to be doing a lot of intense professional work. I also got this one in space gray. They come in two different colors. You can get silver as well. And um, I'm really just going to be testing it and bringing it, you know, with me throughout the day, doing some productive work, working with Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, you know, uh, Final Cut Pro, because I do a lot of video editing, but I've got a video to edit today for one of my channels. So I'm going to be, you know, doing it using this laptop to see how well it handles the speed and exporting and, you know, if it's an okay laptop for just general productive work. But I'll also be doing some studying on it. So we're going to be seeing how long the battery lasts throughout the day because I'm going to be bringing it around with me like I usually do with my laptop. So I'm pretty much going to be downgrading from my M1 Max today to, you know, use this M2 um, MacBook Pro. It starts at $1699, but that's for the, you know, lowest iteration, the base edition with 256 gigabytes of SSD. So the one that I've got here has got 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, and that cost me $1949 Canadian dollars. So that's before taxes. I think after taxes, it's roughly around 2100. So I've had the laptop charged overnight. So it's at, you know, full capacity by today. And, you know, I've used it for some light work throughout this morning, you know, checking my emails, checking my website and trying to, you know, fix a couple of things on there. And um, now I'm going to use it throughout the day. So I want to see how long it can last before it dies because the M1 Max that I'm used to is supposed to have up to 21 hours and the battery life of that thing is amazing. I've just got done a quiz uh, that I had for my online class in managerial accounting. I've also set the screen's brightness mode to auto. That way, you know, it mimics how I would use it on a daily basis or how the average person would use it. This laptop has a retina display. It's also got 500 nits of maximum brightness. So if that matters to you, you know, when using it like in bright rooms or outdoors. Something else that I've noticed that I didn't really like about this screen is having less, you know, screen real estate and those really thick borders around the screen, the bezel. As for the speakers, I find that they're decent, nothing crazy. I haven't really put the M2 chip to the test yet, but I'm going to be doing that um, with my next activity here because I'm going to be doing some video editing um, for my other channel, my fitness channel. I have a video that I need to post tomorrow that I'm going to make today. So it's not a long video and I typically edit, you know, videos between, I guess, uh, seconds all the way up to a 30 minute video. So and they're always, you know, 4K quality which requires a lot more storage and a lot more processing power. So I'm used to the 16 inch M1 Max model handling it, you know, pretty easily, all of my workflow. So I wanna really see how this one can do it. So that's got 64 gigabytes of unified uh, RAM, and this has only eight gigabytes of unified RAM. So now I really wanna see if eight gigabytes is enough, you know, for doing some productive work like video editing, which is what I'm about to do. But just so you guys know, you can configure um, this model all the way up to 24 gigabytes 
of unified RAM. Well, of course, for more money. So this has been like my MacBook companion for the day. And um, this is essentially a lap desk. So this is from iSwift and it's called the Pi. So there's two versions of them, the Pi and the Pi Max. This is the Pi, so the Pi Max is bigger than this, you know. So what it does is it helps you use your laptop in uncomfortable positions, you know. For example, you're standing and your desk is not a standing desk and you want to elevate your laptop, then you can use this. So um, you can also use it, for example, in bed, on a couch. So it's got a weight capacity of up to 44 pounds. It uses magnets and origami style flaps to kind of, you know, get shaped into different positions. That way you can use it while sitting or standing at a desk or while laying down or sitting at a couch. So this is extremely lightweight. I think about 0.2 inches thick. So very, very thin and um, lightweight, which is very, very useful, especially if you want to tuck it away in a bookshelf, underneath your pillows, or wherever you want to hide it, it's going to be easier to hide it, or if you just want to bring it around with you all the time. It doesn't come without downfalls, though. So the biggest one that I would definitely want to bring uh, attention to is the fact that it doesn't fit very well around uh, uh, people with larger thighs. So if you have bigger thighs, then you're gonna struggle with this thing. I find that I have to cross my legs most of the time for this to be comfortable around my own thighs. It also doesn't feel like it's going to be as stable, you know, um, with my other laptop, which is 16 inches and you know, weighs more than the one that I'm using it with, the 13 inch model. It works pretty well, you know, as long as you're not wobbling or shaking it around, it's, it's gonna stay in place. I also kind of expected that because of, you know, how uh, thin this thing is. All in all, I think it's a really, really good um, device if you like, you know, working all over the place. So the price for the Pi, which is this one, is $89.99, and the price for the Pi Max is $129.99. There are definitely cheaper options out there, or even more expensive ones, but I find that this, you know, is worth it if it works for you, if it works for your, your case scenario. So we maximize lightweight dumbbells, you know, using some specific techniques. So the time now is 9 p.m. roughly, I think a little bit over 9 p.m., but the laptop has held out, at least the battery life, you know, is pretty much held out throughout the entire day. I've noticed a few things, you know. First of all, I noticed that um, the screen for me personally is just too small. Too small for me, but if you like small laptops, you know, with small screens, you know, very lightweight, all of that stuff, this 13-inch uh, MacBook Pro will cut it for you. But besides that, there's um, the sound as well. Well, I'm already used to the one from the 16 inch, you know, with more bass and more, you know, punch to it. This one is just a little soft. So one of the ways that I tested out the new M2 chip was by uh, exporting the same exact video that I just finished editing on um, this MacBook Pro, the 13 inch model on the 16 inch model. So I did the same export to kind of see how long it'll take between the both of them. It took about a minute and a half to export on the 16 inch M1 Max model. And it took about three to four minutes to export the same video on this brand new M2 MacBook. Thing is that wasn't even bad because I was working with 4K files throughout. 
And, you know, I thought it would have been slower, but with only eight gigabytes of RAM, it was, you know, where everything was smooth. So I used Final Cut Pro for all of my video editing. And um, yeah, it worked very well on this machine, very fast. I went ahead to push the M2 chip and the eight gigabytes of unified RAM a little further by, you know, testing out multiple apps at the same time. So I ran, you know, Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, uh, a couple videos, even Final Cut I had you know, an, uh, a video exporting in that. Yeah, it was close to the maximum eight gigabytes of RAM, but at the same time, I was running a lot of apps and programs at the same time. So I'll say this is a pretty solid system right here, you know, for like moderate professionals, say you don't do a lot of intense work, but if you do a lot of intense work, a lot of, you know, heavy uh, video editing, you know, graphics design, all of that, then I don't think this will cut it. Like for me personally, I export a lot of videos between 15 to 30 minutes long, you know, all 4Ks. Sometimes it's more than one 4K video layered, you know, right above each other, and that requires a lot of processing power. You can also opt for a 16 or 24 gigabyte unified RAM iteration, which, you know, will be able to handle a lot more workload at the same time. Right now, what I can say is that the M2 chip is definitely a solid new entry, and I can't wait to see what they do with um, the more advanced MacBook Pros, the 14 and the 16 inch models. As for the touch bar, I was kind of indifferent towards it throughout the day. You know, it was there, uh, I kind of used it here and there, but I didn't really care if it was there or not. Like, I would have survived with or without it, you know? So it's cool, some people like it, some people don't like it. You know, so for me, I just really don't care. So this laptop pretty much reminds me of my, you know, 2017 15 inch MacBook Pro. Go ahead and check down in the description if you wanna find out more about this MacBook Pro on the Apple website. But that's all I've got for you guys in this one. If you are interested in picking up one of uh, the Pies from iSwift, also go ahead and check down in the description below. If you found the video enjoyable, don't forget to leave a like down below. Go ahead and subscribe if you're new to the channel and hit the gold bell icon right next to the subscribe button to turn on notifications. Until the next video, it's Tommy with Midas Tech, and I'm out, y'all.